It's Emily Zuby, and we are so happy to be in partnership with Community Newspapers. We're here every Thursday, 10 a.m. live. Today, we have a guest who is not only part of Miami Woman Who Rock Founder Circle, she is my CPA and uh, has been my executive coach, and I've worked with um, our guest uh, over 10 years, and I can tell you that uh, I've learned so much. Uh, not only was she with the IRS for 25 years, her experience is completely my go-to when I'm thinking about doing something. And with that, I'd like to introduce Audrey Penny, Certified CPA. Welcome, Audrey. Thanks, Emily. Thank you for having me on your show. It's really nice to be here. It's wonderful to have you. I mean, we, we talk on a regular basis, but... First, let's start off with your experience, because you've been doing this a long time. And um, just, you know, tell us. Um, I guess I can tell you a little bit about my background. I was born and raised on a wheat and cattle farm in the Midwest. You know, I grew up uh, milking cows, picking rocks, um, everything that a girl from the Midwest would do. And I went to a one-room country school. We had one teacher for eight grades, and um, we learned really well. A lot of us went on to have incredible professional careers. And one of the things that I did is we did something called mental math. We went to the blackboard and we did all the math on the board in our heads. And I, at a very early age, I had an incredible math aptitude. And the other thing that happened since we lived so remotely, um, we had a bookmobile and um, I read, I think I read every single book in there. They would come once a week and, and bring books out to this farming community. And I look at my background where I really learned business and where I learned about the world was through the world of the bookmobile. I was a voracious reader as a child. Um, to kind of fast forward, I ended up going to college in, at Montana State in Bozeman, which everybody watches Yellowstone. <laughs> I, don't, I don't watch that. Wait, I, I, uh, I was there. With, I'm in yeah. love with Yellowstone. I, I live that I'm life up there. there. Um, you know, the Gallatin Valley in Bozeman is absolutely beautiful. And um, while I was there, um, I wanted to be an interpreter at the United Nations. I always loved languages. And my older brother told me, you need to get a job. Um a stable job where you can make money. And what happened to me when I was a junior in college, I got the most coveted internship in the country. And this was a paid internship. It was what I called the firm. It was um, with a federal agency. And um, they hired two people in the state of Montana, and I was one of them. And I worked my way through college. I don't I think always I've ever worked. heard this part yeah. of your story. Yeah. I worked my way through college and... Um, and I think the reason they hired me were two things. I really knew how to work. And, um, you know, so I ended up with this internship that was incredible that turned into a 25-year career. So my background is tax. And we men he mentioned the Internal Revenue Service. Everybody's scared to death of them. They don't like to – my husband – has a tendency to announce that in social settings. I don't like people to know that, but <laughs> that's my background. I started working um, when I was 19 for them, and I retired at 46, 25 years later, and I started my own business. I've been in my own business for 25 years. I've, I've practiced accounting for 54 years, and I think I'm just getting started. I, I love that. And I, that's a really important message because um, I just had a big birthday. You know, I'm in my 60s. I'm 63. I tell everyone how old I am. And it is so important to remind not only, you know, individuals, but women in particular that, um, you know, we're, yeah, we're just getting started and we could hit the reset button at any time. And I don't plan on retiring anytime soon. I know you're not. Um, so that whole idea that you have that outlook and, and the, the experience that you bring, you know, not only coach me, but I see the work that you do with so many entrepreneurs and you guide them and you're like, well, how about you did it this way? And you look out for those common pitfalls. And, and I mean, that experience is, just, I know sometimes I think I have a good idea. I'm a real visionary, but I don't, I, I don't have the skills you have. And, and you are such an amazing resource for me. I mean, I, I, I think you've taken what I do to the next level, just simply, you know, taking a look at what I do. <laughs> right. I think, I think, you know, you're born with certain skills and I, um, I think I have business flowing through my brains. My, not my brains, my blood. I have, I have that yeah. business flowing in my veins. And that's something that's just a given. And I was taught business. Remember, I came from the Midwest from a farm. And 
when the work that I did, I worked with a lot of businessmen who were self-made, very successful businessmen. And I learned business from those men and women. And I would sit really like this, almost in front of them for weeks at a time. And they told me their stories, how they started, what they did. And I learned business like you will not learn in the business school. And as a woman, um, you know, I had a lot of opportunities. Um, we're talking back, how old was I? 19, 20, 21. I was pretty at that time. I was young. I was pretty. You're and, pretty you know, at that, I will say that, you know, that the advantage of being a woman, and I always, I always sought to learn when I walked into a situation, it was tell me how you got started. What do you do? What's your passion for business? And that's really how I learned. Um, and uh, that that's great. So we do a lot with Fifty Shades of Pink. Ten years ago, um, Miami Women of Rock next year will have a landmark year. It is a big anniversary for us. Not only does Fifty Shades of Pink will be our 10th anniversary, Audrey was one of the first women that we honored as women who rock finance. Um, I remember that year, you know, 2014, and we were at the Country Club. And, and, and you know, we're just honored. And since then, you have been such an integral part of Miami Women Rock, our founder circle, and have given back to the breast cancer survivors, sponsoring tables, medallion ceremonies. And this is a point where um, we get raw and real. And uh, last month, before a tax deadline, you discovered that you had breast cancer. And um, this is one of the moments that I know rocked your life, it rocked mine, just seeing you go through it. Um, and you never know what life is going to hand you, right? So you depend on your faith and those around you. So can you share with us, like, what went through your mind when, you know? Well, I, I want to kind of give a little background of that first. Um, in 2014, when you honored me with the Finance Award, um, I didn't really understand what Miami Women Who Rock did, what it was all about. And when I walked into that, she's honest. <laughs> when I walked into that, um, you know, the Coral Gables Country Club and saw what was going on, I was absolutely shocked. And my background's different than a lot of the women that were part of that philanthropic group. But um, in 2014, what happened is my younger brother, I have three brothers, my younger brother had an accident and he became paralyzed from the waist down. And when I got the phone call, um, I really didn't understand this. I was like, what do you mean he can't move his legs? And, you know, I sat and I kind of cried for about four days. And then I got up off the couch. I told my husband to make plane reservations. We flew to North Dakota and I got up there to this farming community where everybody was waiting for someone to walk in. Everyone wanted to help. Um, and I walked in and my mission up there was to take care of my brother. Um, it was I, I'd never experienced anything like to see someone like very big strapping guy, you know, hunting, fishing, farmer. He was an incredible controller. He was really smart. We all have finance in our family and and he needs help. So we raised over $100,000. And you know what? Um, my mission was to take care of my brother and the community was waiting for somebody to rally around. And I got off that plane and we started to rally and I got on the local uh, radio I station, that. the With TV no media background. No, you no. Just... Well, you know, I had a mission and that was to save my brother and North Dakota up there is it's an oil company. It's the Bakken is up there. The largest oil vein in the North American continent is up there. And I walked into that thing and I was on a rate there. You know, I just walked in and said, I need to be on the show. I've only got a few days. We raised a ton of money and because everybody wanted to help. And, and, and I have, I have no problem asking for help. Um, and, and I remember you know, we were at the hospital and, and we got my brother into the Craig Institute in Denver, which is probably one of the most renowned um, spinal cord and traumatic brain injury centers in the world. And then I got on the plane and I flew back home. And then that was right before your event. So, you know, a lot of people were raising money through different charities that are involved. But my experience was different. It was real. This was my brother. And... Um, and then fast forward, and the other thing I'll mention in my background is when I was 20, 21 years old, I was diagnosed with insulin-dependent diabetes. I had no idea. I got really ill and almost died. And I remember when they diagnosed it, I said, you know, I don't know what that is, but I don't have it. Um, my plan was to go to law school. I wanted to go to SC. I was in Los Angeles. And that was an impairment. It took me 10 years to learn how to manage that. So I had background in things happening that... Um, 
you know, with the diabetes, I just couldn't believe it. It, um, And I will tell you, fast forwarding today, um, my doctor tells me you have the most advanced, sophisticated, <laughs> expensive medical equipment in the world. And you can't see it. I'm wearing an insulin pump. I have a Dexcom on my arm. Every five minutes, I get a glucose readout. You know, I'm on it. And so when this thing came up, I get a mammogram every year. I'm, I'm, you're, you're I'm totally on. into my health and health care. had a lot of experience. So I got my mammogram, and they told me, I, I had sev- they went back several times, and they said you have um, calcification that's suspicious. And the next thing I know, I'm, I'm getting a biopsy, and the next thing I know, they're scheduling a, a partial mastectomy. And I thought, I mean, I, I don't know any idea what I thought this was going to be. And my first thought was this timing's really bad because um, September 15th and October 15th are my biggest tax deadlines. And I'm thinking, this is not a good time, you know. So we scheduled my surgery um, the day after. October 15th was my deadline. The surgery was the morning of the 16th. So I worked till probably, I was working, to, uh, you know, 12-hour days all through this process. And, you know, it didn't really, you know, I knew there was a solution. Like, I'm alive because of insulin. Um, I'm alive because of technology. I'm alive. Um, insulin was discovered in 1923, so I'm alive because they have that. And then I, I get all this technology. And, and through you, I knew we were sponsoring the table for survivors. We were in the thick of everything yeah. that you do. And, um, you know, I was I was kind of like... You know, I was I didn't really make a big deal out of it because I knew what you need to do. We need to get that out of there. And I had the surgery, and um, the next day I did laundry, which is when you're from the Dakotas, that's what you do. You don't lay in bed. My mother— I, I went over to her yeah, house to yeah. bring flowers, and I can attest that she was doing laundry. And I said, what are you doing? No, my mother is 100. My mother turned 100 a couple of uh, weeks ago, and she delivered my brother that's paralyzed in the car. We lived remotely, so she, you know— 30 miles away from the nearest hospital back in the in the 50s and she delivered that baby sitting up so i come from that kind of women we don't really convalesce much and besides it was my breast it wasn't like my legs or my arms or anything and um and then when i when i felt better you know i got back to work because that's what i do best i have a lot of people that rely on me um to take care of of their businesses their tax issues and that's what i do so it really hasn't, you know, it's been kind of an, and I'll tell you something else. Um, I'm wearing a bracelet here. Emily, and I had a birthday. I just turned 72. And Emily came over and she gave me her bracelet. You can see it here. Um, Vivian Carioga, right? Carioga Designs. She came over and she gave me this bracelet to wear with a birthday gift, you know, to loan it to me. November is my birthday month. And I have this gorgeous bracelet that I wear every day. Um, you know, so... You're making me emotional. Yeah, here, we're moving you know? right along, you know. Yeah. We're moving right along and <laughs> I, I, I'm just part of I'm just part yeah. of this big community. Yeah. And yeah. And it's um, you know, one of the things I have to say is that as Founder Circle members, um, you know, you, Trish, all all the, all the amazing women. I mean, we fe- we started the Founder Circle in 2017. And, you know, I just love these women and I always say it's not a me, it's a we at Miami Women of Rock and um, you're such an example of that. You know, I had the flu. I mean, last last week in the show or the week before, I had right. the flu, and and, and we had a cre- uh, Christina Ter- Termini, and I felt so bad because I barely had a voice. Right. But, um, you know, that week, you know, first soup delivery was you and, you know, your husband, and they made you made sure that I had soup. And mm-hmm. it's a really caring community. I mean, we have like a, a special secret sauce, I think, to our community. And it's made up of women that are super caring and full of faith. And um, and you're such an example of that. So, I mean, you know, the, the I loaned you the bracelet with love. And, you know, I love the fact that you're wearing it today. And yeah, I'll tell you that I, what I really believe is I, I, you know, I, I learned how to cook as a child. And what I do, people ask me, what do you do to, for leisure time? I say, well, I cook. I cook a lot. I bake a lot. And I really like doing that. I have an outdoor kitchen. I love being outside in my yard. And it's what I do to kind of, and, you know, I do my thought process there. And I think that one of the biggest things that, that I have going on, like I have, I basically have forensic accounting running, running through me. I understand that. You know, I think with work, like I've watched what you do and you've got to have a vision. And for me, 
my entire career has been to basically to solve problems, big ones. And I always, um, I've learned how to take a step back and really think. And many times I've been in situations that are way over my head. And I've had to stop and say, okay, God, I need insight and I need it quickly. I need this. We don't have much time here. I've got to, I've got to identify what a problem is and I've got to solve it. And I think with, um, with that being said, how I work is I still do that. You know, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by a lot of things, but I always ask for direction. And never once have I been let down, you know, and I can. Um, so when I cook and I clean too, believe me, I clean my house. When I'm doing those kinds of things, I'm thinking about about the client. I'm thinking about what they've asked me to do. And it's during those times when I'm doing that chopping, cutting at the cutting board, um, that the answer comes to me. You that's know, am- that's amazing. And I and I have to tell you that you have you have such a interesting combination of skills. Um, and you have been my voice, you know, as yeah. I have spasmodic dysphonia and have talked about that on the show before, but, um, recently had a press interview and lost my voice the day before. And we sat with yeah. the, um, the journalist and <laughs> you know, but you knew the answers better than I did. Yeah. I mean, you, you, so you have a bit of that. You definitely have that forensic brain and that mathematical brain and, and those, uh, that business acumen, but you have a touch of PR in you as yeah, well. A lot. You know, you have to have PR when you do what I do. And as a woman working, I think I was just taught that. You know, I grew up in the Midwest. My father was, and my parents, you know, were the way they were. There was always food on the table. People stopped by. They were, you know, it was just the way that I was raised with that kind of a deal. And I think that, um, like sitting with you, and I also, one of the things I do is I love to write. If I ever retired, I would write. And one of the ways I raised money for my brother is I started to write. I basically told the story. Um, I wrote I wrote every single week, and we posted it, and money just came in from all over the place. And people said, you have a real gift for writing. And I said, well, I'm just, I, I really can write the experience about what it was like to grow up on the prairie. And uh, I love to write. I love to read. And I think with you, what I see in you is, you know, the people that Emily know, you know, the world kind of knows you know, Miami Women Who Rock, Fifty Shades of Pink, but I see the Emily that, that I'm sitting across from, yeah. and I, I see all these gifts that you have, you know, the gift of, of inclusion with people. Emily, you know, walks into a room, and she can pack the Biltmer with 300 women, and she makes every woman feel like they're the only woman in the room. Thank you. You have such a gift with that. And I think for me with my clients, like right now, one of the biggest things I'm doing is mentoring and working with kids that I knew since they were 12 years old. Uh, You know, kids that grew up in the neighborhood with my kids are now in their late 30s, early 40s. They're entrepreneurs. And I have the I have the incredible privilege of working with them. And these kids, I shouldn't call them kids, they're grown up. (laughs) They have an idea. They know what they want to do. They have a passion, and my job is to encourage them to bring out the best and then do what I do best, which is to structure their business and to be there all the time, which is why when I got breast cancer, there's really not time to hang out and lay around. Well, you're just so responsible. I'm curious if there was one piece of advice that you would tell your younger self, what would that be? Looking back now and, and... um, I guess the example I would tell myself is I got married um, 20 years ago to my husband. My husband is from the Northeast, very different background. He went to Amherst. He went to Pitt. He was the top of his law school. He's good looking. He's handsome. He's super smart. I love Peter. Yeah, he's, re- <laughs> he's, really, he's really something else. And, and he meets, you know, farm girl meets Northeast. Philadelphia attorney, you know, really refined. And I'm not quite like that. And he told me. Um, when he met me and we started working together, we worked together a lot. He said, you don't understand how good you are at what you do. He said, I, I've worked with a lot of people in big firms and what you bring to the table is remarkable. Your, your knowledge, your skill. And I guess if I could tell my younger self how, if I could see myself through his eyes, you know, later it's on, beautiful, yeah. which, you know, as women, we often undervalue ourselves. We're working hard. We've got to do what we had to do. I raised my kids. 
alone as the single mother, and we're so busy. Yeah, and you working. see kids. You're you're yeah. you've got yeah. amazing, amazing, um, you know, man yeah. and woman that are quite successful in their own yeah. right. Um, you know, and uh, you know that 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 success and that driven. I mean, they they saw how hard you work and they followed your footsteps right. because I have the honor of knowing them. I think for women is to just to value yourself and what you can do. It doesn't matter what you do, is to value who you are. And Peter did that for me. He, he just, it was like, um, <laughs> this is kind of a scriptural reference. It's 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 in the book of Proverbs. It talks about the apple tree, and it really is the story of like, you know, under under his branches I could flourish. I became the best that I could be, with him. You know, with the love and the knowledge, and we worked really well together. We were an incredible team. We are an incredible team. Well, I mean, I, I first when I first met you, you were my dynamic duo. I had yeah. bought a house in the Gables that ended up having mold, and I, right. I needed to get out of it quickly. And you and Peter, let me tell you, best real estate attorney I have ever yeah. had because yeah. you know he got his lawyer voice on, and I just yeah. felt like I knew I knew it was handled. And you know, and and you that's how I thought of you guys is just, and still think of you guys is a dynamic duo because right. both of you bounce off uh, off each other on a lot of ideas and approaches. And and I think the biggest gift that I'm, you know, I have my brother that's living here, my brother, older brother that was my mentor growing up, um, became ill, and we ended up moving him from Los Angeles to Miami. He lives in the palace, and we care for him. We care for him financially, and we care for him uh, in all different ways. And, and it has to be a life of service. You've got to be able to give to other people. And, you know, my job with my, my children that are now adults, and for all these um, kids that I've known since I'm 12 who are now adults, is to be in their corner, to be their children, to tell them they can do it. And when they come to me with an idea, I said, well, let's talk about how we're going to make this happen. You know, and I can believe in you. Um, I really love what I do. And, um, you know, there's much more to come. I, I love that. And um, you definitely helped me see the light and I see where we're going. And, you know, speaking of where we're going um, next year, as I've mentioned, is a landmark year for Miami Women to Rock. It'll be 15 years. And we have the Book of Leaders, which is our leadership legacy initiative. You and I have talked a great deal right. about that. And we're about to announce we have our uh, press launch. We're about to announce the first 12. And I have gotten, well, I've had the opportunity to meet with some of the individuals that I've known from the airline industry all the way through, you know, when I was on Wall Street, and then also refer to some others. But when you think of leaders, and you and I know you know very well what we're doing with the Book of Leaders. What what do you think of in terms of like what's what what makes a good leader? I think you have to have a passion. You have to have you have to love what you do, and you have to have a love for people, and you've got to have a heart of service. And even in the airline, you know, think about the airlines. That's service, getting people from here to there. Like when I had to get on the plane, fly to North Dakota, I needed that airline to get me from here to there. And I think the biggest thing is you've got to love people. And you got to be willing to put yourself out there to help them. You know, I get phone calls all the time from people that have, that are looking for what I do. And, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is sit down and, and have you tell me about yourself, what's going on, and then figure out how we can get from here to there. But it's the love of people. It's the love of service. And then to be, and I, I consider myself an incredible expert in the field that I do. And I'm, I'm never through learning, and I'm never through asking for help. The other big thing is to ask for help. People who are successful aren't doing it alone. They're asking for help, and they're surrounding themselves with people that can help them do what they need to, which is Fifty Shades of Pink, which is the founder circle. It's women helping other women. It's, uh, yeah, the, the the empowerment. And we don't even use the word empowerment as much anymore. Yeah. We use the word elevate. Right. Um, but we were in the empowerment business, right. you know, 15 years ago before it, it even became a right. buzzword. Um, but in part of that coaching, uh, I'll never forget this, but I was recently asked in a press interview, what is the uh, the best book that I ever read that helped me key in on leadership? And it was Shoe Dog. 
It was the yeah. Phil Knight story. And the yeah. person who recommended that book was was you. And you you have actually put many good books in my right. in my hand and right. said, you, you need to read this. It gives you a different perspective. Yeah. What would be your all time favorite read when it comes to business? Well, I read a lot and, and that's a hard question to ask, but I'm not the person to read. I really I, I get a lot of things across my feet as a CPA and it's how to make more money, how to get more clients, how to do this and that. I don't read any of those books. Um, I want to read the real story. I want to read how I want to read how Phil Knight started, you know, shell, selling shoes out of the trunk of his car. I want to know how he got from he had a passion, and then you know Nike's another story. What happened down the road? I want to read about that. I've always been interested in what makes an entrepreneur tick and how do they get? It's a passion. You got to have a passion and a love and service. I mean, imagine we all need to have a good shoe to walk in. And you know, I read. I read the book about about Steve Jobs. I mean, his passion were, was a computer, how to make things work. And you never know where that's going to take you. Right. You know, it takes you incredible places. And I, I, um, when I first became involved with you, and the thing that I love is to see that women, a lot of these women out there, the women that you honor, don't see themselves as anything extraordinary. They just, you know, the doctor, the whoever, whatever she right. does, you have some pretty incredible women and they see themselves, this is what they do every single day. The women that raise all this money for all of these, you know, diabetes research is a big one. They raise, the women that do that, that's incredible. That helps keep me alive, you know, and um, I, I think that, um, you know, people really need to have a passion for what they do. So for my read, I've always got a new book going on. Uh -huh. I read all the time and... Um, how do I have time? I read at night. Oh, I listen to audiobooks. While I'm cleaning and cooking, I'm listening to a book. I don't have any time going by when I'm just kind of free floating out there. I always have something coming into my head. And, and I love that. That's wonderful. If you're just joining us, uh, we are on Spotlight TV with Audrey Penny, certified CPA, and uh, she's absolutely fascinating. And and one of the things that um, we had done together was to give back to branches. Yeah. And I know that you and Peter have done quite a bit and with different organizations and everything that Miami Woman in Rock, we're a social, a corporate social responsibility. We're a platform. Yeah. And um, through that, we've gotten to work with over 75 different charities and um, in different ways. So, so time, talent, treasure, right? Right. What have been some of your favorites and maybe moments that you'd share with us? Um, branches definitely was, we, there was a time we were in very, we were very involved in a lot of things until a, 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 how much is six, seven years ago when we started taking care of my brother, that really became a, a big thing that we were doing. But I don't have any problem. You know, I grew up with family. The way my the way I was raised, what I saw my parents do, is farmers in the Midwest took care of each other. And when I say that, they took care of each other. And I learned I learned philanthropy as a child. It wasn't called that. They just did that. And I think that giving back. If I have it, you're going to have it. If I've got it, you're going to you're going to get it. I don't have any. I'm not attached to my things. And you and I. This is kind of for the women out there. Emily and I do a lot of what's called closet sharing. We we look a little different, but we can wear the I've same we can wear the same clothes, <laughs> the same shoes, the same jewelry. And if you have something and and I have something that you want to wear, you know, like the bracelet and anything that we have, we share with each other. And that's you know, I don't know very many people that can do that. Sharing but, is caring. Yeah, we can do that. We can we can share with each other. And I've had the privilege of being a big part of what you do. Every time you have a press interview. You know, you can probably find Audrey in the background writing something to help Emily. <laughs> and, you know, when she was diagnosed with spasmodic dysphonia, I knew all about that because I was a, a major fan of Diane Rehm yeah. from NPR. And I knew when Diane Rehm um, was diagnosed with that, it was it was a blow to everybody. So I knew that condition. And one of the things that went on with you is very people, few people understood what you had. I did. I know. You, and was you, able to really champion. You did the homework on it. Yeah. You said well, me. I already knew. You did. Yeah. You did. Well, we have a few, a few minutes left, and I always like to, um, the whole idea of Spotlight is to shine a spotlight on you, what you do, your passion, your purpose. Um, so this is your chance to give us your one-minute commercial. Well, I think that I can. I have a client anywhere. I can find a client anywhere. How do I get my clients? You know, I don't, I'm don't. i not a big network person, but um, I used to go to the 
pool in the Biltmore. I did water aerobics. And one day I was over there. I was putting some sunscreen on, and, a, and a, this large woman said to me, stop, that's poison. Well, to make a long story short, that's a 25-year client that I've had. They have an, an incredible line of skincare products, Dr. Alkaidas Organics. And I worked with them until they both passed away and the, the business went to the daughter. So I'm thinking I can meet a client no matter where I'm at. This is in the pool. You know, we're, we're in our swimming suits. And by the time she told me not to put it on my face and an hour later in the water, they had retained my services. And I know that I made a huge difference in their business. I know that. Um, so for me, a client is, you know, the client is sitting right over there just for me to reach out and be who I really am. And it's because I care about people and I really care. It's not easy. You know, it's not easy for people in business and everybody needs someone in their corner. And, you know, CPAs are, pros, are supposed to be trusted servants. We're supposed to bring ethics to the table. We're supposed to bring a lot of skills. And, and I feel like that's what I was born to do. That's amazing. Yeah. And you were working remotely and servicing clients long before. I mean, yeah. I know that that changed, yeah. but, you know, you I know that, that you yeah. know, they were on the West Coast and you yeah. did that. So I, I can't I can't thank you enough for being on Spotlight. Um, I adore you. Um, I'm so <laughs> grateful. I mean, I thank God every day for you because I have learned a lot and um, and you have taught me how to ask for help. So we hope that you've enjoyed this Spotlight TV and that you'll join us uh, next Thursday. And we're going to be here every Thursday um, for the next four weeks at 10 a.m. live. And, um, and we have a surprise next week. So we hope to see you on Spotlight TV 10 a.m. here with Community Newspapers. Have a great day.